Hello and welcome to a brand new edition of Inside Out on the Road, a show where we focus on individual stocks with in-depth analysis, deep dive into the financials and tell you about the key risks and triggers going forward. So let's not waste any time and get to our first talk today. My colleague Nigel gets us this very special deep dive on Safari Industries. Safari Industries is the stock in focus and before we get to the company, a quick word on the captain of the ship, Mr. Sudhir Jatia. Remember, he's the former MD of VIP Industries. He took over the reins at Safari close to 11 years ago and he's been taking on the big boys in the luggage industry since then. To give you one data point, well, the net profit that the company has achieved in the first nine months of this fiscal is more than the entire sales the company did at the time of takeover. In the past one year as well, the stock has done quite well, beating the benchmark index by a good margin. The entire industry size here in India is around 10,000 crores. Branded players, they constitute close to 56% of the market. Now, macro pressures coupled with customer preferences has resulted in a shift towards branded products, fueling growth for the organized sector over the last few years. Now, growing middle class in India and increasing propensity to indulge will further accelerate growth for the entire industry. Now, breaking down the market share from the big three, which constitute 95% of the organized market, Safari has easily outpaced its larger peers and now commands more than 20% of the organized market. The key focus has been on the mass segment as well as online sales, which constitute more than 20% of sales. The company gets a large proportion of its revenues from hard luggage, post that capacity expansion, while soft luggage is basically sourced from third parties from India, Bangladesh, as well as China. The financial performance as well has been rather strong. The revenues per quarter is now being clocked at around 300 crores. Margins as well have seen consistent improvement. On the margin front, earlier they had lower margins than VIP, which that has turned around. The key reasons for margin improvement include operating leverage, which has played out, post the capacity expansion to 5,25,000 units per month, They've also gained on margin front due to the increased sales from polypropylene-based hard luggage whose prices have been more or less range-bound. And online sales continues to see traction. On an annual basis, they're well on course to do closer on 1,200 crores of revenues in FY23. That means they've doubled revenues in the last four years. And margins as well have seen a good improvement. On the shareholding front, well, the promoter holding has dipped to sub-50% because they diluted stake to Investcorp in 2021 and also due to some reclassification of the promoter holding. So the non-promoter holding boast of some rather large names. But before we wind down, a quick snapshot on the valuation picture. But let's not waste any time. Let's get straight to the man himself, Mr. Sudhir Chatia. Hi, Nigel. Nice to meet you. Absolutely. Please Pleasure. Welcome. Well, Mr. Jatia, thanks so much for speaking to us here at CNBC TV 18. But before we get to the company specific details for the industry on the whole, is there any signs of slowdown? Because every other industry is talking about some sign of slowdown. What's your reaction to that? So, Nigel, right now, on ground, we don't see any signs of a slowdown currently. Because, as you know, marriage is one of the large reasons why luggage is purchased. Mm -hmm. And the marriage season this time has been an extension right from 15th of Jan till 15th of July. Okay. So at least till the end of July, we don't see any signs of slowdown currently. And of course, there's the summer holidays, April, May, June again. And the travel is maximum. And also international travel would have opened up 100% in April, May, June. So right now, fingers crossed, but at least we are not seeing any major signs of a slowdown currently. Oh, that's interesting. You know, and the entire industry size that you're, that uh, you're the industry that you all belong to is roughly around 10,000 crore industry on an average. That's right. For the industry on the whole, where do you see this number headed, point number one? And point number two, we have been observing over the last few years, the shift from unorganized to organized. And it's been a good shift, right? Earlier, maybe we're talking about 35, 75%. Now, in fact, it's in favor of the organized at around 60, 40. Tell us more. How do you see the industry grow and how do you see this mix change? So I think the industry should continue to grow at around 15%. That's our estimate that the industry should continue to grow. And the shift from unorganized to organized is also been phenomenal, right? With the advent of GST implementation, 
and of course what happened during COVID because the business model earlier was just getting material from China and distributing it in India, right? And the whole shift which has happened from outsourcing to manufacturing. So today you cannot import from China and just distribute, you have to manufacture. And most of the Indian companies have now hit critical mass in terms of manufacturing. Like we have the critical mass in terms of 500 or half a million pieces uh, plants. So we are viable and we can compete globally today. Mm. So everyone's talking about the good times, but you all must have gone through a very, very difficult time at the onset of COVID. Yes. So how was that phase, you know, 2020 odd when, when COVID hit? Were there any retrenchments? Were there job cuts, salary cuts? How did you all cope with the system? So I think uh, when, uh, I mean, of course, when COVID hit, which was, I think, end of uh, March, and I remember we had an informal discussion with uh, my investors and the board members. And I think it was a good thing we did that we said we are going to be driven by, what do you say, the conscious or the soul of the company and not by financial the financial motivation is not going to be the reason, the way we behave. Mm -hmm. So I think we are the only company in the bags and luggage space which did not do a single retrenchment. We did not do a single uh, salary cut. In fact, we also paid the bonuses for the year 1920. And as a result, the goodwill the organization and the company generated. Mm -hmm. And when the times became, you know, when the times turned again, we have not lost any talent. So I have not lost a single talent in my top management. Attracting talent has become easier. Well, Mr. Jatia, you know, the big focus from the time you have taken over has been growing in the mass segment. That's right. As well as focus on the online business. Now tell us about both these two aspects. One is on the mass segment, what qualifies as mass segment for you? 2,000, 3,000, 3,500, what is it? Point number one. And point number two is online business as a percentage of your total mix, I think it's around 20%. So where do you see this number stabilizing? So two things. I think this decision of uh, Safari being a mass market brand mm -hmm. was done within six months after I took over the company. Okay. Because we wanted to be a relevant player in this industry and we saw that the other players were occupying more a premium uh, space in the market and the mass market as a segment was forgotten right. and the unorganized players were a large part of that market and we said we want to be a significant player with a big brand at yes. the center of the market that's how the decision came right for us mass, mass mass market you know many people talk about 2000 2500 but i think internationally and in india also anything which is from 40 to 70 dollars for a cabin size is a mass market. Okay. So anything between, let us say, 2,000 or 1,800 for a cabin size luggage up to 4,000 is a mass market brand. Online sales? And online sales is around 20-25% of our business, 20%. And I think it is going to stabilize out here. Okay, all right. Now let's get to the numbers. You know, you used to do around 200 crores per quarter. Everyone thought it was great. But the last few quarters, you're clocking closer to around 300 crores. And you're all set to end this year, just going arithmetically, that you should end at around 1,200 crores of revenues. You had part of the benefit of that additional capacity that you put on. But for the coming year, what kind of a growth number you can look at? Keeping in mind that you said that the industry will grow at around 15%. Go ahead. I think if you were to look at the future and the way we look at the future and the way the organization has been driven, mm -hmm. we have been a top-line focused uh, organization for uh, the last 11 years. Yeah. In fact, our estimate would be that uh, Safari would be the number one brand in India by revenue okay. in the current year. And... I think we have a 11 years unblemished record of outgrowing the market. I don't think we plan to break that record in the coming future. So if the industry grows at around 15%, I think we'll maintain our record of outgrowing the industry. So let me put a number to that then. If you end this year at around 1,200 crores and if you're going to outgrow the industry, at least next year you should end at around 1,400 crores. And that is going purely by the mathematics. So let's see whether or not that happens. But if you're going to grow, then I guess you'll have to spend more on advertising as well as marketing. So as of now, how much do you spend on advertising, branding, marketing as a percentage of sales? And do you see that number move up? So we are spending close to 4 to 5% of our revenue on marketing, but okay. we spend it more on point of sales, on the online platforms, etc. We don't do mass television in the traditional sense kind of, but the, our online spend is pretty high. Yeah. And on the point of sale, right? Right. And going ahead, I think we can manage with this uh, 4 to 5, maybe some quarter, maybe 5.5, some quarter, maybe 5. 
I think the biggest challenge the organization and as a company we are going to face is can we work this magic in the premium segment of the market? Right. In the next five to ten years. Okay. All right. You know, the other point is everyone used to talk, talk about Safari, say, as a small cabin bag. No, so to call it. Yeah. Now suddenly you're the big size bag because you're commanding more than 20% of the organized market. Yeah. What is the vision out here? Our endeavor would be to continue to outgrow this industry. While we have done very well in the mass market, mm -hmm. I think the biggest challenge the organization is going to play and the mm -hmm. company mm -hmm. is in the next five or 10 years, can we become successful at the premium end and again try and dominate and try and become the number one brand at the premium segment. Okay, so premium as a percentage of your sales will be obviously very, very, very small. I mean, uh, absolutely zero, zero as of now. Yes. So since you're talking about premium, where do you believe that mix can go to? Say in the next two, three years, do you think it can constitute 5%, 10%, 15% we'll of your total? Digits. If you have to make a serious dent yeah. in the market and if you want a significant market share at the premium end, mm. it has to constitute close to 20, 25% of my business and, in the next 5 to 10 years. You know, currently you're in, you're in the third position. Yeah. Is there a possibility you can sneak your way into the second position? Going by what you're saying, you're going to outgrow the market, you're focusing on mass, and now you want to get into premium as well. Yeah. Do you think that's a possibility? Is there a vision for 2027, say? I don't think any organization can have a vision less than being number one. Mm. Right? So I don't think any organization or any CEO of any company would say that my vision is to not be the number one. So that yeah. is your vision? The vision but is you need there, to get whether... to number two first. Yeah, number two. I think if we can cut this pie three ways first. Yeah. So that is one third, one third, one third. Yeah. And then let's see how life takes you from there. I understand that you're opening a store almost every week. Yeah. Correct me on that. How many stores have you opened so far? How many EBOs do you have? And also, if you could tell us, where do you see this number headed in the coming uh, coming year? If you see competition, they have close to 400, 500 shops each. While we are currently at uh, 80 yeah. count. So, so that 80, were, go, 80 goes to what level? I think next year we should be at closer to 130, 140. Well, Mr. Jatia, you know, growing the top line is something that everyone was excited about a few years ago. But the kicker has come in on the margin front. And in the past quarter, gross margins are close to around mid-40s, with the bitter margins coming in at mid-teens, more than mid-teens. What do you think is the outlook out here? Because we know that the focus has been growing the top line, operating leverage is playing out. PP-based hard luggage, that's what's helping out as well. But keeping in mind advertising cost, opening more stores as well, where do you see the margin stabilize at? So, uh... Nigel, if you see the pre-COVID period also, actually, if you see Safari, we have been doing a gross margin of 42-43% even in the past. Yeah. But because of COVID and the shift which happened between soft and hard and the China costing had gone up, freight cost has gone up, and our ability to scale the PP business where the consumer and the competition uh, had a very strong positioning. Mm. Having achieved that in Q3, yeah. so I think we've gone back to our historical levels of 43-44%, which used to be there at pre-COVID. And it was sustained, uh, I think, over a five, six year period where we had 43, 44. I think this is the right kind of margin and it should be sustainable. So gross right. margins will hold? Should hold unless there's uh, again some event Big in terms of in commodity price or yeah. oil or something like this. On EBITDA margin, having uh, got to this scale mm. now, right? I mean, it would be stupid to have a thousand uh, crore company and <laughs> have a EBITDA margin of 9% or 8%. So I think we've got that scale. I think it would be difficult for us to go in single digits a bit margin again. But mid-teens is something that you would like to hold? Is that yeah, the I aim? think that should happen. Okay, all that right. should happen. You know, and also you, you mentioned that maybe in fact you look to add capacity as well. Yeah. Right. Now currently you're doing close to 500,000 or thereabouts, yeah. 525,000 as per the BSC release. Yeah. Do, would you look at adding capacity? Because just to put it into, into perspective, industry is going to grow at 15%, mid-teen margins, so for FY24, 1,400 crores with mid-teen margins is something that the street would like to see. Sure. So what about capacity expansion? One of the things we are trying to approach the government also, that we are one of the rare industries actually where a small capital investment. Yeah. Say we invested 100 crores in the last uh, 12 months in uh, Gujarat, right? Right. Halol plant. And, yeah, Halol plant. And we generated direct, indirect employment for 2,000 people. The current plant is accustomed to making masks. Mm. So how do I get that uh, you know, mass plus kind of manufacturing capacity, which still 5-6% which comes from yeah. China. And I think we are looking, we will look next year to look at another location outside of 
Gujarat. And that could be another 100,000, 200,000. What could it be? Uh, it should be around 100 to start with. And if it's outside Gujarat, which I mean, which so part? We do you have think? looked at other options. We have approached a few of the state governments to try and like. So we approached Rajasthan, mm -hmm. right? Because North India is a bigger market to us. Okay. And let's see what happens. What about uh, you know on the capacity expansion? 100,000 in a new location should roughly come at what kind of a capex? Depends, but maybe a 30, 40 crore capex to start with. And an asset turn in your business would be? I think an asset turn in our business is close to 1 is to, one is to five. 5. Okay, got that. 1 is to 5. So if you put in around 30 to 40 crores, you could be generating revenues of roughly around at least 180 to 200 crores. Yes. That'll be a fair estimate. That's right. Well, Mr. Jati, we have a handle now on, in terms of business. But in terms of shareholding, you know, you had some dilution, you had some promoter reclassification. So the promoter holding has come down below 50%, around 47% odd. Do you have a plan to take that promoter holding back up to around the 50% mark? So actually, I had a family separation. As a result, my elder brother's uh, wife owns close to 5% in the company. So if you see, both of us combined are above uh, 50%. And I think 47 is also fine, because as long as the promoters and the companies interests are aligned, it does not matter, and as long as you're doing a good job, right? Because why would I like to destroy value? And I think it's in the mind now, whether it's 50 or 47. Uh, but Mr. Jata, do you see the holding coming down further from here, or do you think it'll stabilize at I this I think level? it will be stabilizing at this level. So. Let's flip it around. What if someone signs a big check and says, Mr. Jata and family, I want to buy all out? Is Safari on the block? So I'll give an answer what the earlier seller of this company uh, told me when I was buying this company, that I asked him, are you emotionally attached to the business? He said yes, but he said, I'm not an emotional fool. Right. So same way, I'm not an emotional fool, but yes, Safari is not on the block. Does it depend on the size of the check? Right now, at any size. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And final question then. You know, shareholders, they like when a promoter runs business emotionally and, uh, you know, the way they grow it as well. But what about a succession plan? Are the daughters involved in business? So I've got two daughters. So my elder one was uh, working in Safari for five to six years. They're, she got married 15 months ago and she's pursuing a MBA from Harvard Business School. So she's not working. And my younger daughter was working in the US, but thanks to COVID, she had to come back and she's joined me 15 months ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure whether they would like to join Safari or not join. I mean, they are adults in their own sense. But yeah, definitely if they have the emotional connect and the ability to run this business, then why not? Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Mr. Jatia. Thanks so much Thank for you. speaking to us. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you. All right, that was a deep dive into Safari Industries, but time to slip into a short break. We'll come back with another interesting stock. Cinema SGS Tech is in the spotlight on the other side. Stay tuned for that. <laughs>